creating a world of color and beauty out of lifeless crayons and paper. She recently won a prize at the Shankar's International Art Competition for Children. But her talent might have forever remained hidden. She was very nearly just another unwanted, nameless, and abandoned child when just two hours old. Instead, she has found abundant love from a foster mother, Asha, in an unique experiment. She has, ever since, known a real home, even a real brother. Abhilash is one of her little brothers. He, too, was once an unwanted, anonymous little scrap of humanity. Today, he is even a little spoilt by a large and adoring family. Abhi has everyone running to fulfill his slightest command. Even Ashutosh, little Gavaskar to his friends, can always find time to bowl a few overs at Abhi's bidding. Another one of Deepti's numerous family is Ruchika, who provides a useful canvas for her big sister's creative talents, sometimes. Each of these children was once destitute, abandoned, and unloved. But today their lives are full. They have been helped by the SOS Children's Villages of India, who have provided them with homes and identities. The SOS Children's Villages in India accommodate over 5,000 children in more than 20 villages all over the country. SOS, the international distress signal, wherever there is need. These villages in Assam came into being after the riots which outbroke in Assam in 1983. Hundreds of children became homeless, orphaned and destitute. So, government was requested for their rehabilitation. But uh, because of our continued good work in this field, we are requested by Prime Minister Mrs. Gandhi to take about the rehabilitation work of the children in our own manner, in our SOS family way. The SOS way is to give such children a mother and a family of brothers and sisters. All of them once abandoned themselves. But once they enter the gates of an SOS village, they are orphans no more. Every SOS village has about 20 cottages, single family units with eight to nine children and headed by the mother. While an SOS home can never replace the natural home, it does seek to provide as normal an upbringing as possible. Children here learn to live in a community, to acquire self-discipline and self-confidence, to acquire knowledge and develop creativity. <laughs> And it's a learning experience for the women of the community, too. Many of them have backgrounds of poverty, widowhood or abuse, with nowhere to go. Here together, they weave a miracle of mutual healing. Mrs. Tara Ali Baid is the president of the SOS Children's Villages of India. Every child in a good family is a privileged child. There has been no system devised in the world that has looked after the so-called millions of destitute children. This is the best system that I have found. 
it's a family-centered system. And as such, uh, it is dependent upon the quality of the mothers and the village directors and the councillors that we have in our villages. It takes time, effort, and a lot of input to make a decent human being. Each SOS village has, at its head, the village director. He is father, friend, councillor, and administrator. J.M. Kohl was the first director of the first village here at Greenfields in Haryana. Today, he is Secretary General of the Movement in India, but returns to the village frequently as Papaji. Here, a marriage proposal is being discussed. The SOS villages in India were born more than two decades ago. The seeds were sown here amidst the rubble and called Greenfields. The only criteria followed in accepting a child was that he or she must be under seven years of age, though this is sometimes relaxed, and an orphan. The experiment worked so well that today the government of India has endorsed the SOS model as the ideal childcare system for orphaned, destitute children. The SOS child usually begins his quest for a home and a family at an adoption center like this one, supported by the SOS in Madras. Every effort is made to give an orphaned and abandoned child a family with adopted parents, failing which the child is taken into the SOS village. As in any community, each SOS village, and in fact, each mother has her own philosophy and style. Though through professional counselors, special problems are tackled. In general, SOS families evolve their own interpersonal relationships. It is not too uncommon for a mother to have her favorite child, pampered and sometimes even a little spoiled. SOS gives to this woman a new life. It gives her a purpose in life. It gives her motherhood, which she wouldn't have achieved otherwise. And, but all said and done, this is this woman who really is the key to the success of the SOS village, to the work of the SOS village. Life is difficult for her, life is hard for her, but life also has a lot of joys for her. And this is this joy that this woman derives from the child that makes, that makes her life beautiful. The SOS provides training courses for mothers, which is also an opportunity to make a detailed evaluation of her before she assumes the responsibility and emotional bonds of motherhood. Refresher courses are also regularly held. Taravati Sharma has had 17 years of being a mother at the SOS village. She is now a member of the SOS board of directors and plays a role in its functioning. She says she has found her greatest satisfaction from watching the little plant she has nurtured blossoming and their fragrance perfuming her universe and that of the world 
that had once threatened them with such cruelty. She has confronted numerous problems, but nothing very difficult or different to what any mother would face. An SOS daughter, Lena, is one of the girls the village is proud of. She remembers the love, companionship and joy that flowed between the members of her SOS family, a memory that she will cherish and take with her forever. Lena goes through a traditional Hindu wedding. Mr. Kaur, Papaji, performs the Kanyadan, the giving away of the daughter. At least 15 girls have been married from this village in Greenfields. Darshan, another SOS married daughter, is today herself a proud mother. She has doting in-laws. It was all arranged after her now husband, Dr. Bhatia, who was practicing in a nearby village, saw her and sought the director's permission to marry. जो मेरे को सबसे ज़्यादा मुझे समझ सके, मुझे ऐसे लड़का चाहिए जो मुझे मतलब सोशल वर्क में जो करूँगी, वो उसमें मुझे साथ दे सबसे ज़्यादा. Like teenagers anywhere, Asha and Punita too have dreams of the kind of man they want to marry. Shri Kumar Nair was brought up at the village in Bhavana. There on I went on for my B.Sc. in Ramjas College and uh, soon after B.Sc. Uh, I was I, I, I was uh, uh, taken in by the Obrois as a photo management trainee, but then I left the job on my own and came back and worked a little with the village itself, and well inspired with the SOS, I thought of working for the children, and uh, I got a very good chance working for the CCF project. There were around 101 orphans and female orphans. His commitment so to I the philosophy that the changed his life of despair to that of possibility took him to working for other children and later a grooming for a role in the SOS villages itself. In fact, the SOS movement worldwide is today headed by an SOS child, Helmut Kutin. The main success is that 99% of the children have just become normal citizens of their respective countries. By today there are more than 60 grown-up boys and girls of SOS who are actively working for SOS on a worldwide basis. The dream of SOS saw its dawn in Austria in 1949. The vast numbers of orphans from the Second World War moved the compassion of a young doctor, Dr. Hermann Miner. He was moved by the essential need of every child for a mother. Today, all over the world, there are over 600 projects touching the lives of over 50,000 children, supported by four and a half million people. Wow, very good, very good, very good. One more. Hello. 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 The SOS concept is an international concept, but it's unique, I think, as international organizations go, in that it is entirely run by the country concerned. And therefore, the SOS in India is a totally Indian organization. 
the SOS families in India draw from the rich diversity and tapestry of its culture. Each child is placed in a family where his or her own religion is practiced. If the child's religion is not known, the mother's is followed. Battered as it has been by circumstance, the child must not be further bewildered. Girls and boys grow up together as brothers and sisters, as cousins and friends. The SOS model has been sometimes criticized for lacking the masculine authority some consider necessary for the balanced development of the child. SOS does not pretend to compete with the natural home and natural parents. It is at best a substitute. There is only one father to every village. Many of the children take his surname and he is often their legal and personal guardian. They come to him with their questions, their problems, and here discuss choice of career. What the science is Older children go to the best schools and colleges in the nearest city. There is no fixed age when they must leave the village. As in any normal home, they stay till they find jobs, get married, and can stand on their own feet. Even that marks only a shift in their physical world. They continue always to maintain strong links with their families. The joy of discovery, of growing up, of caring, and being cared for, all find expression in the SOS family. Asha is studying fine arts at Jamia Millia University, but she returns home every weekend. Sixteen-year-old Om Prakash crushes stones in a quarry near Greenfields. He is orphaned, but too old to be taken into the SOS villages, but not too young in the eyes of the law to be the legal guardian of his five-year-old sister and eight-year-old brother. So the SOS supports him financially and keeps an eye on the little family, intervening and helping when necessary. SOS is always a good friend to neighboring villages. The village extension service is known as the family helper program. In this village, the services benefit mainly the families of laborers working in the stone quarries. <laughs> This is the village extension officer from SOS. He is the village's contact and resource man for a host of development and aid programs from sanitation, soft loans, and even a wise and guiding hand for personal problems. The Family Helper Program holds adult education classes particularly for the women of the village, 
during the little time they can spare from their chores. Shardaji is an SOS mother. If motherhood has its problems, it has its joys. Many children who come to SOS have been so scarred emotionally that they do not fit easily into the harmony of an SOS family. There are children at SOS who have seen their parents murdered before their eyes or perhaps worse, seen them commit murder. Their horrors are not easily forgotten. It becomes then a challenge for all at SOS to draw the child into their circle of care and affection, to help erase the trauma and restore the natural vivacity and innocence of childhood. <laughs> Well, the best thing to happen to a child is to have his own parents. Next best, perhaps, that he finds a home. And if we have to succeed in our work with children, with children, we must accept them as they are. And once we accept them really, emotionally also, as they are, we will succeed, and we will succeed, and we have succeeded in a big measure also. SOS seeks to give children a rounded upbringing, catering equally to their physical, emotional, creative and intellectual needs. Many of these children have been late starters and so there is a lot of catching up to do. The SOS village is where children can be children, where they can experiment, make mistakes, and evolve, secure in love and the wonder of discovery. Hello, Shakal. Kina chhoto shikarer pechu ne motka ghar tar bol pet bhara hoy mangke the. Bhagre? Ye bag mama na ki? Hari? Yato Shakal e kimo ne kore hota? Ha ha. अरे तारा तेरी बेरोना बाड़ी तेरे कुछ जुड़ी कथा आ ची तो क्या मन जुड़ी दी कथा ये शे तुम्हारे बाड़ी तेरे छुटे हैं जो अरे ना भागने शमशेर इस डी विलेज पोटोग्राफर हिमसेल्फ एन एसओएस चाइल्ड टुडे ही वर्क्स फॉर डी विलेजेस विद हिज ओन डार्क रूम एंड इक्विपमेंट टेकिंग पिक्चर्स ऑफ � These pictures are used to maintain a record of the child's growing up and to send to those who support a particular child. The SOS village is a home and like any home it needs resources and money and budgets and confronts economic realities that all of us must do. Like us, they too have guests and visitors. This is Fatima. She is more than just a guest. She is a friend of SOS. Here, here is so different, unlike other institutions for children. And in this way, you get into contact with one particular child. I am supporting him, you can say, and I can give him a bit of affection. I'm just a kind of a fairy godmother for him right now. He's a child. I don't know as he grows up how it's going to be. But he'd, he'd be a very important person to me. <laughs> Friends of SOS help by making donations, endowments, sponsoring a child, or even just a child's education with a small regular sum every month. Some, like Fatima, give even more. They gave of themselves. She has helped nurture young Dinesh to the top of his class. It is the small man or woman 
in the street who would, who one day, and I hope very soon, would be a friend of SOS, would be a friend of children. You have read our slogan many times, many children need many friends. 